Hello, welcome to another episode of Executive Suite. We're here with uh, Andrew Murray from Aslan Renewables, and he's got a very exciting company that is generating hydropower, uh, micro hydropower, and it's very interesting. Um, Andrew, can you please uh, tell us more about your company? 100%. Yeah, thank you very much, Thomas. Um, so Aslan is a uh, clean energy producer here in Canada. Uh, we're specialized in the micro hydro space. So I think we're probably hydropower in a way that your audience is not familiar with or hasn't been yet. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we produce power in the small to medium range. So we're activating those tens of thousands of dam sites that uh, your large utilities typically overlook. Okay. Now, I saw something uh, in, in uh, some reporting about your company that you're focusing on dam sites that have, were previously dam sites, but were abandoned. Yeah, 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 absolutely. This is a really important part in our company's history, like baked into our DNA, uh, but also the nation's history. So we focused on sort of decommissioned dam and mill sites. So the sites that we look at, you know, are, are they, they exist as small hydro sites today, small hydro dams, but what they used to be was grist and timber mills, even textile mills um, that are spotted all the way through the country. And um, most of these sites were eventually converted into, into small hydropower stations, uh, you know, in the 40s and 50s af after the Second World War. And then coming into the 60s, they were all decommissioned. They were all shut down. Um, what's made Aslan's journey through early growth here a really interesting one is we can go back in public record. We can find these sites, uh, understand their history, and of course, like pinpoint them across the country. Um, so it gives us a really, really good data set for you know just how many small hydro sites are kind of buried under the surface, right? Right, and you're estimating that. Um, I think you were saying just in PEI, there were over a hundred of these. Well over a hundred. Um, it's funny. We thought there were about a hundred when we started this project. And uh, as we've been going across the island, meeting with families who have one of these sites on their land, uh, meeting with farmers, um, all kinds of, you know, different watershed organizations, we're finding more and more of them. And in fact, I was sitting in someone's living room about a month ago, uh, talking about repowering an unpowered site on their uh, on their property and they pulled this thing off the wall which was an old map of all of the mill sites across the island and there were 182 listed sites so again you know we talk about a small territory a tiny province like pei having 182 um, small to medium hydro sites that could be sources of clean power and nobody knows about them um, so that's really our mission is to bring them back to life so in a larger province that's quite mountainous like british columbia you think that there might be 10 times more like a thousand fifteen hundred or what yeah it's a good question and again just an exciting part of uh, our story so far um we've been trying to get into canada's public record and look through all of these different data sources for a while so that we can understand you know province to province how many of these sites could be um, could be available, um, and it's been tough. So, as a company, we've actually digitized this process really recently. We came out with our own internal product that's able to take satellite data um, and map it against watershed data. So we're looking at topography, watershed, and then cross referencing that to transmission lines. So we can see transmit like uh, proximity to interconnection points and distribution, and like this, we're able to go coast to coast, analyze every single province, and have our digital analysis pull out all of the all the sites that were you know ninety percent that were ninety percent sure um, were once a small hydro site and uh, and could be again, um, and in a province like British Columbia. You're right. I mean, the topography is optimal for these. Plus, you have a lot of communities that are that are that are far apart from one another. They're very spaced out through the province, and so we expected that there would be hundreds of uh, of, of applicable hydro sites for this type of work. Um, in the end, we found I can't tell you the the exact number, but we found 
thousands, thousands of sites. In, okay. In so what happens to the power? Are these powering, are these going to power uh, houses that are off grid or does it just feed into the grid or is it a combination? It's a combination. Um, it depends on where we're deploying, right? A lot of the time we're, we're working with local utilities, trying to give them additional baseload for their supply. So, I mean, Aslan's DNA here is to supply clean baseload to Canadians. And we do that through partnerships with great off-takers, great utilities in every province. Hydro-Quebec, NV Power, NS Power, BC Hydro, etc. cetera. Um, so our company operates with power purchase agreements, feeding that, feeding that energy right into the grid for 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 the populace um but what's been great about this technology and specifically hydropower is it's phenomenal for localization as well so the same way that we can feed uh, our clean energy right into the right into the metro grid for distribution we can do that for rural communities rural projects um, indigenous partners who are seeking kind of energy sovereignty or energy independence this can tie directly into schools, hospitals, microgrids, um, which is really important because, as you know, we've had a history in this country of diesel reliant communities spotted all over, all over the, um, all over the nation. Um, so, Asen's working hard now to deploy its technology into those communities that need it the most, so that we can take that diesel out of the equation and give them stable, stable, clean power um, in perpetuity. Sure, like a mine site, for example. Sure, Maybe. yeah, or you know- Big diesel generators. Like yeah, we have a lot of underserved areas um, uh, in, in Canada, and uh, this is a way for us to solve that problem for both our energy distributors and the communities that rely on them. So can we talk about the uh, return on investment for one of these things, because you're, a private company and you're, um, you intend to make a profit off of this. And it sounds pretty profitable because the, um, I, I think I saw in the CBC piece that uh, was done on your company that uh, one site might cost say $50,000 to install, but power 15 or 20 houses. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what we've done as a business that's been really different in the hydro category is focused on the productization of our of our solution um, and as a result we've tackled some really important cost barriers that have kept small hydro um, from scaling in the past so what that means for us is you know we will we are building a highly replicable highly standardized product that can sort of be copied and pasted to all of the sites that we've identified across the nation. Um, so that's our, that's where our focus is, is like bringing down, uh, bringing up that rep replicability and bringing down those cost centers as a result. So yeah, I mean, today um, we're quite confident that we've got one of the lowest costs to benefit profiles uh, of any system in hydro. Um, and that's, that's largely because we've, we've productized and moved into a mass manufacturing scenario. Um, but honestly, Thomas, it's also because we're deploying some really modern tools. You know, we use, um, we use composite materials. We use, uh, AI to run a lot of our remote operation and our, our compliance, our reporting, some of these things that have been true barriers of scale in the past. Um, we've, we've tackled them head on. Yeah. So I was just, cause I was just thinking in, you know, doing a little bit of arithmetic in my head. If uh, the average house was paying $150 a month for electricity and you could power 20 of them, that would be $3,000 a month. So you'd be, you could be collecting the roughly $36,000 a year just off of one site that requires maybe only $50,000 of equipment and then, you know, some engineering and construction costs up front. But once it's set up, how long do one of these things last uh, once you set it up? Typically, we shoot for about 18 years. Um, that's our benchmark. And, uh, and uh, you know, in, in the case of Aslan, our system is very light, very agile. And so even at that time, when we go in to refurbish or replace some of our parts, it's a very, very simple kind of turnaround compared to traditional hydro, which obviously is pretty hands-on if you want to change out generators or, or and key components. 
everything's big and um, capital right. intensive, right? So right. it sounds like it's a actually a, a really attractive business model. Um, if you were to try and scale this up to a thousand sites, how would how would you finance it? Would you use that projected cash flow to finance it with um, bonds, debt, that sort of thing, or or would you just uh, allow people to invest in the company or in individual sites? How does that work? Yeah, it's a great question, and and I think I think this is something that's you know even the Canadian government is doing good work on these days. I think that renewable energy solutions and especially baseload solutions uh, that are going to be an important part of our kind of clean energy future here, there are more and more forms of capital that can be applied to a project like this. And projects like ours are becoming more and more agile to work with those capital sources. And what I mean by that is, you know, we want to be able to finance these sites certainly one at a time if we need to. But our replicability and the, the way that we build product and deploy product is standardized to the point where we also want to be able to bundle these together, finance them as larger projects in much the same way that we saw large wind farms or solar farms be financed in the past. So, you know, we're asking the question as a business today, if a wind farm can be installed for $80 million dollars, and have a projected run uh, lifetime value and et cetera um, uh, that fits its profile, can we not bundle a, a series of identical hydro sites that are DER, like di distributed energy resources? Um, can we not bundle them together to reach the same sort of financing goals? Um, you know, so those same debt structures, uh, grant structures, uh, equity structures, those same capital stacks that were applied to other forms of clean energy, this company fully intends to leverage those against distributed hydro. Yeah, well, it's hard to raise equity right now, but if you can guarantee people a stream of income for 18 years, I think they'll step forward. Can you tell us about uh, the projects you're working on right now? Absolutely. So uh, an exciting thing since our, our last um, our last launch, uh, we had a product come out last year, which we installed uh, in, in the Maritimes a couple of times as, as a, a, a test and a proof of concept that this could be highly replicated. Our company since has raised our first equity finance round and built out an internal team that's brought our product into a Gen 3, um, a Gen 3 iteration. And we've also, in, in lockstep with that, expanded the business model into several other provinces. So we started in PEI, as you know, um, and we plan to deploy there this summer uh, with two active projects ongoing uh, right now. Um, on top of that, uh, we're working to deploy this in New Brunswick as well, so our neighboring province, uh, which was a natural fit for us. And we found a great partner with, um, with NB Power uh, and, and the New Brunswick government. Further from that, I mean, we've, keep, we've kept on going west. Uh, we found a great environment for the development of DER resources in Ontario. Uh, Ontario is the home of the Ontario Water Power Association, who have been great partners to us and have gotten us into this market. Uh, we're really, really happy to have that relationship. And it's been very advanced, uh, advantageous for small generators like ourselves. So we, we are planning at least six projects in, in Ontario uh, over the next 12 months. And then we started work in British Columbia as well. Uh, British Columbia is a really, really interesting environment for projects like this because you've just got so many different types of energy opportunities. Uh, we, we found um, a lot of promise working directly with First Nations. Um, I've been really, really fascinated and encouraged by the ingenuity um, of, of those nations uh, throughout BC and the way that they're developing their own energy resources. So we want to be part of that story. But of course, you also have groups like Fortis and, and BC Hydro who are issuing um, calls for power today. You know, uh, BC is a really, really interesting market because the demand is very real um, and the opportunities are kind of diverse. So we're, we're working hard to be, be in as many places as possible. And of course, like, you know, on our side, great achievement there is not necessarily the growth or the market penetration. 
it's the replication. So what you're going to see from this company that's really, really groundbreaking um, for the hydro category is the systems that we deploy into the water in New Brunswick and the systems that we deploy into the water in BC will be identical. Everything from manufacturing to civil works and installation. Um, and we expect their performance and, and local impact to also be pretty much identical. And that level of replication and the way that it unlocks scale is something that the world has not seen in my opinion. Wow. Uh, well, it sounds really exciting. And I actually have uh, a lot more questions for you, but we're getting towards uh, the end of the uh, show here. And I think we've got to wrap things up. I want to thank you again for coming on and sharing uh, this exciting story with us because I think there's a lot to be said for people being energy independent on a micro scale even and, uh, you know, perhaps being off grid and not having to even buy electricity from the uh, hydro company. The nice thing about these dams is unlike wind and solar, they're not on and off right they, they just can, can run continuously yeah so Absolutely. Totally okay reliable. well thanks again for coming on and i'm going to um sign off right now and uh, thank everyone for joining us um take care